hail damage is brutal for everything it touches especially your home your siding your roof even if you don't see the damage most likely you will see it in the years to come but you only have one or two years to deal with the damage to hire a contractor replace the roof replace the siding dilemma is you're going to be under a lot of pressure you'll have door knockers coming to you and you will have to do your research the purpose of this video is to help you understand and give you some tips how to hire a contractor after the hail damage to replace, to repair your roof, siding, gutters, everything has been affected. Thank you for coming. Your insurance company is giving you a message that they're your friend, they're on your side. In reality, insurance is always gonna try to save the money and you will not believe how many legitimate claims insurance companies are denying every year. It saves money. It screws all these customers it, and it gets new ones. Okay. Or they don't know or they don't have the power to do it and they, so and they renew it. And it's a revolving door of customers coming through. If you document the damage, uh, document the hail, literally take the pictures, go outside. If hail destroyed your plants, your plastics, your toys outside, anything that you can visually see go document film it save it in a folder for insurance later if insurance company comes back and say that um, they don't have a record of hail in your area you will prove it to them you will uh, show them damage sometimes insurance companies cannot send adjusters right away they have a backlog so two three weeks later it's so much easier for them to say it didn't happen or they didn't um, you know, in your area, it did not happen. So document the damage immediately. Everything you see that uh, was not there yesterday before the hail event, you want to put in writing, save it on your devices for easy access in the future. I'm not against door knockers. There's a lot of good guys out there with the good hearts who will come to you and will try to help you. But when you have 20 people knocking on the door and okay. trying to build sense of urgency that they're the only one, they're the saver, you only have to choose them. Uh, and if you don't hire them right there and then, the sky is gonna fall down and your property will collapse. Your property probably will be fine. And I want you to take your time to educate yourself on the process. I want you to mentally prepare for that. Uh, don't hate on them. They will come. This is just name of the game. If you want to entertain all the door knockers, entertain it. You can put sign on the door that you don't want to talk to them. It's up to you. What I'm advising you to do is just mentally prepare, understand where they're coming from. You need help as well. So maybe, you know, talk to 10 guys, take their cards, but I want you to choose them. Don't let them choose you. It's not the game where the most aggressive contractor wins. It's the smartest one should win. And you are the boss. You are the property owner. You choose them, not the other way around. Don't sign anything at the spot if you don't feel like it. Uh, no matter how easy it sounds, read the fine print, understand who is in front of you, do your research, but more than anything, prepare for lots of door knockers. Sometimes door knocking experience is worse than hail damage experience because you know your entire neighborhood will be under attack. A lot of companies will come from out of town and they're gonna try to earn your business. Some of them are ethical, some of them are not. You will hear the stories. This industry is a little bit crazy. Be prepared for it. they give you a card ask for the contract for contact information don't sign anything on the spot if you don't trust them now if company comes to you you've seen them around you've seen them around for years maybe they have great presence in your town you, you hear radio ads like you know that company is different but if you have never heard of that company all you have to do just google the name maybe google the owner's name I have seen many roofing contractors getting jail time for collecting a lot of deposits and not doing any work. You don't want to be that guy. But if you study those stories, 
uh, they have one thing in common. People trusted the person in front of them without doing any research. Simple research of the person would show that that person actually have a track record already. So for example, if someone gives you a card and you go in and they have one star uh, rating on BBB or Google and you already see one or two reviews that people pay them down payment six months ago and still to this day, they didn't get any work done. What do you think gonna happen to you? That should be a red flag that the contractor in front of you is collecting payments, not doing the work, maybe robbing Peter to pay Paul. And if you don't like what you see online, don't hire them. And my advice here is very simple. Just don't rush it. If you don't know it, it's okay to politely ask for them to leave and say, hey, I wanna research it. I don't know you, let me Google your name let me read your reviews i'm a homeowner who's doing my homework i understand that i have a damage and i would love to talk to you tomorrow but today you know I, we just met you seem like a nice guy but i'm gonna go and do my due diligence to research you you pick them they didn't pick you not the other way around you want to make sure that you are in control the whole time. At no time, contractor should be in charge. And if you feel any pressure, if you feel any gimmick, stop the process, ask them to leave. Maybe tell them you're gonna call them later after you complete your research. Many people are skeptical about signing contract without a price. In insurance restoration industry, it's actually very common. If you trust your contractor, if you pick him, you've done your research, you know that you have a trustworthy person in front of you, don't be skeptical if he cannot provide you a price. I want you to think about your house insurance claim just like you think about medical emergency. When you go to the hospital, doctors can give you the price upfront, how much it's gonna take them to fix your body, to fix your disease, to fix, to do the surgery, but everybody is different. While hospital can give you rough price, everybody's different. Some people need more medication. Some people um, need to stay a little bit longer in the hospital. Each day in the hospital gonna add to the bill. If insurance is paying for it, you don't have to worry about it. You don't shop for doctors. You just go to the hospital. You know your insurance is gonna pay for it. Now, if you do go to the hospital and you pay cash, price is might change a little bit, but you're liable for it. The same with the contractors. You know, while we can give you a rough estimate how much it's gonna be, when we work with insurance companies, we build those insurance companies. We understand the game. As a matter of fact, 95% of contractors who work with insurance companies use the same software that insurance companies use. So trust me when I say it, insurance company not gonna pay us too much. As a matter of fact, they will always try to shorten us. So even if your insurance company already wrote the estimate, usually it's 30, 40% less than it should be. If we're talking about state, farm, all state, nationwide, it's, all, it's a number across the board, across the nation. Uh, I talk to contractors all over the place and you know, you almost never see insurance adjuster who comes to the house who who gives you what you really need so they always want to lower it trying to get away with it trying to save insurance company money and contractors have to go and um, open the roof open the siding do the work and then a lot of times we have to supplement not because we're greedy because it just takes a little bit longer we have something unexpected happening. Like right now we have a um, big crisis with materials. Materials is on the rise, plywood, metal, uh, plastics, everything is going up. So we're paying almost 80% more for lumber than we were a year ago. So insurance company owes you for all of that. Now, you know, if insurance adjuster gave you price what it costs today and we do job three weeks later, the price might not be the same. So it's okay to sign a contract even if you don't know the final number. The only thing you have to worry about it is your deductible. Pay your deductible and let your contractor deal with all headaches. I promise you this, your insurance company not gonna pay him too much. Stay away from companies like HomeAdvisor or AngelList. Those companies will take your information and will sell it to five, 10 contractors at a time. 
use search-based platforms like directory or Google Guarantee, where you search for the contractors near you, hopefully closer to you, use Google Maps. Uh, directory is one of our companies, uh, also a search-based company, and always will show closest contractor to your zip code. Always go with a local, closest to you, highest rank contractor in the area. If he's busy, not available, not a returning phone call, go to the next one. But take a list of a contractors near you within 10, 15 mile radius who have good proven reviews over the years, who you can trust, you know they're not far, Google them, Google their name, see what kind of content they have been putting out. Uh, just like employers stock their potential employees, on the social media, what kind of posts they do. You can do the same about your contractor. See what kind of content they're putting out. Are they negative? Are they good people? Are they just using a lot of gimmicks or they're maybe to push it online? I've seen contractors doing some stupid stuff online and if it's there and you can find it, maybe it'll help you to make your decision. So use search-based platforms, not paid-based uh, lead generations. Those are the worst. Usually you're not gonna get the best contractors. You will find contractors willing to pay at the moment. And I personally not okay with anyone selling my information for profit to other people. Some insurance companies build a network. They have a huge conflict of interest. So instead of giving it to the market, instead of saying, hey, we're gonna pay for the damage, you choose the um, contractors of your choice, just like, you know, if you're the homeowner or if you uh, go to the hospital, you choose your doctor, insurance company has to pay for it. The same happening in the roofing industry. Um, you should be able to choose a contractor. Now, some insurance companies, they literally created program where they certify contractor who is agreeing to work for less a lot of times, a lot of shading is happening. Um, I've exposed a few of them in the past. Those programs usually worst of the worst. Recently, we've seen one of the companies actually go out of business, really big player, 20, $30 million company, not far from here in Omaha, Excel Roofing. They were preferred company who was working for insurance, a program called MadSky. MadSky even named them as a contractor of the year or something. So great example why, how companies who work with insurance closely, sacrificing their profits and sooner or later can even go out of business. It's a bad practice for the contractors now. Um, we hope that insurance companies will build better programs so we have incentive to work for them. I did not see any programs that I can endorse up to date. So if insurance companies watching us and they have amazing uh, program for the contractors, and it's the best contractors. I would like to hear from it, but what I've seen, it's usually not good for the industry, not good for the homeowners. I believe that homeowners should do their search for the contractor. And if insurance company is recommending to you their contractor, ask yourself why they're pushing that contractor. What's there for them? Because insurance company is not always on your side. It's a marketing gimmick and I want you to be confident. Now, if you believe your insurance company, if you believe and fell in love with that contract that they're recommending you, go for it. But my advice, don't be pushover, make your decision, don't let insurance company make the decision for you. Those are my tips, comment below what you guys think, what did I miss? If you're the contractor, what other tips would you give to the homeowners? If you're the homeowner, if you have any questions about insurance claim process, I would like to answer those questions in comments below. Give this video a like if you like this content, want to see more of them. I'll see you guys in the next video.